uh, I've got an introduction to make and an apology. Uh, we're having technology problems, but I'm sure that we can we can make it work. Uh, but I want to introduce to you uh, Ben Chandler. Uh, I hope everybody knows that name. Yes, he is the Chandler family of Kentucky and uh, has held a lot of public office. And uh, I'm afraid I'll leave one out if I tried to name them all, but, but he's a well-known man in the state, and we're just very lucky and very proud to have him here today. Ben? I've got your PowerPoint here. It's just not connecting through the floor to there. <laughs> it's not working. So, okay. You got the your PowerPoint is not working. Right. No, the PowerPoint works. But not you need to get, right, right. So nobody can really see it. Right, right. except right. on that screen there. Well, it's minor detail. Okay, good deal. good deal. That's all right. Uh, Judge, I'm grateful for you giving me an opportunity to be here uh, today. It, I want to talk to you about something that I think is very important. And uh, you're right, I've held a number of offices here in Kentucky so, uh, enough to be able to tell you that, that I'm not sure I know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> it's still at this point. Yes. And uh, now I'm in a new one. I am the president of the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky, and that's a statewide organization. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but uh, uh, thank you and the magistrates, uh, the, the fiscal court, for inviting me here tonight. Uh, I really do appreciate that, and I appreciate you being willing to listen to what I've got to talk about. And I'll try to, to be as uh, brief as I possibly can. Uh, the Foundation for Healthy Kentucky is a nonprofit and nonpartisan foundation. Uh, we, uh, we have one goal, one goal and one goal only, and that is the goal of uh, trying to improve the health of our people here in Kentucky, and uh, on a number of different fronts. And as you can imagine, here in Kentucky, it's a tremendous challenge. We are not the healthiest group of people in the world. Uh, in fact, we bring up the rear in most statistics. Uh, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to promote public policies that will lead to better health. Uh, that, that's the main thrust of what our organization is trying to do. And the emphasis, our first emphasis, has been on tobacco reduction. Why is that? Uh, it's because Kentucky presently is the cancer capital of the United States of America. Now, I, one thing I think that all of us have in common is that we love our state and we love our people. And I don't think it's tolerable for us to carry on having the highest rate of cancer in this nation. And there are very few families that I know of that haven't been impacted by it in one way or another. It's a terrible thing. And uh, what I can tell you is that there's actually something that we can do about it. And, and I want to just mention the numbers here in o Ohio County. As I told you, Kentucky leads the nation in cancer. Well, Ohio County's rate of cancer is even higher than Kentucky's. And I had a slide to show you that. Uh, and uh, I, 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 Fred, if they want to look at it, I got the numbers. If you all, yeah, well, yeah. That, at some point, I'd like for you all to look at it. Uh, but Ohio County is is considerably above the rest of the state in cancer incidences of cancer, and of course, the state leads the nation. Ohio County's smoking rate is a full seven percent above Kentucky's, and Kentucky also leads the nation in smoking. Now, why is that important? Because 34% of cancer, of cancer cases, are tied to smoking. A full third of all cancers are attributable to smoking. Now, what that tells me is that a third of our cancers are preventable. That's what that tells me. So, uh, what do we what do we need to do about? It? Well, the first thing I want to tell you is, is that. Uh, over 10,000 Kentuckians died of cancer this year. And just about that many died from smoking-related illnesses. 
Smoking related illnesses cause more deaths in Kentucky than suicides, murders, automobile accidents, drug overdoses, and gun deaths combined. And did you all, you all got that? that? That's pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned. It's an incredible toll, and I don't think the people in Kentucky realize what a heavy toll it takes on our state. And I, I want uh, everybody to understand that. The Journal of the American Medical Association last year did a study, a national study, and it showed that since 1980, cancer mortality in the United States of America has declined by 20%, except in Kentucky. They actually singled us out as the prime place in this nation where cancer deaths have actually risen at the same time that they're going down by 20% in the rest of the country. Now, I would respectfully submit to you all that all of us ought to do what we can to do something about that. And there is, uh, there is very definitely something that we can do about that. Uh, what we can do, and I'm going to skip over some of this stuff. Uh, I've got some slides about e-cigarettes. Uh, they are not helpful either, mainly because there is a high prevalence of use of e-cigarettes by young people. And that's what we mainly don't want. We, we want to stop people from smoking at a young age. We want to keep them from smoking in the first place, basically. The statistics show that 95% of smokers start before they're 18 years old. So if we can get them early and keep them from starting to begin with, that's a good thing. Well, the trouble with these cigarettes, they're full of nicotine, and they are proven to be a gateway to smoking for young people. So we want to include those uh, in any efforts that we try to make to reduce the smoking rates. Um, Kentucky also, I might tell you, has a, an extremely high rate of smoking during pregnancy. And uh, our rate in some counties is as high as 40% of women who are pregnant smoke. Uh, Ohio County's rate, again, is above the state rate. More women smoke in Ohio County than do in the rest of the state on average. So that's just another reason. Economically, and this is a point I, I want to very strongly make, economically, and the state chamber will tell you this, uh, the state chamber is a partner of ours in our coalition to try to take on the smoking problem. They want to do something about it because they know that if you have an unhealthy workforce, it's going to be hard for you to attract jobs to your county. Why is that? Well, it's because if, if a worker, in particular, if you've got a lot of smokers, you've got lower productivity on the front end, and you've got higher health care costs on the back end for those businesses. And that's what the business community will tell you uh, without exception, that it is not a helpful thing. And counties who go smoke-free have a leg up. They have a leg up in, in economic development. And that, again, don't ask you don't have to take my word for it. Ask the state chamber. They'll be happy to, to weigh in on that subject. So uh, there are a couple of things that we can do that will reduce the smoking rate and ultimately the cancer rate here in Kentucky, and they don't cost the taxpayers anything. That's the beauty about it. It's at no cost to the taxpayers. You try to do something about the drug problem, you try to do something about uh, diabetes or heart disease or a lot of other problems that we've got, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to do something about those problems. But this is one that we can affect at no cost to the taxpayer. And we think that is very, very important. One of the things that we can do to reduce the smoking rate is to raise the tax on cigarettes. Now, you all will be happy to know that you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> that's, 
that's something that has to be done on the state level. And uh, we have already done something about that in the last session, and you may have seen where the cigarette tax was raised by 50 cents. Uh, and, and we hope that that will have some helpful effect. But the other thing that you can do is you can pass a smoke-free ordinance here in Ohio County. If you did it, a comprehensive smoke-free ordinance, if you could pass one, you would be the sixth county in the state to do so. Out of the 120 counties right now, five have smoke-free ordinances, and they uh, comprehensive smoke-free ordinances, I should say. They are Fayette County, Jefferson County, Woodford, and Oldham, which are right next to Fayette and Jefferson, and Hardin County. So you'd be the furthest one in Kentucky west, and uh, it would, I think, be a very big deal in Kentucky if you all would do that. Now, I assume that you're familiar with what a smoke-free ordinance is, but all we're talking about is indoor build, in indoors, inside buildings that are uh, accessible to the public. That's what we're talking about. It doesn't mean that you can't, you can still smoke outdoors. You can still smoke at home. You can still smoke in your car. You just can't smoke where other people are closed in a place where they have to breathe somebody else's smoke, secondhand smoke. That's what it's all about. And it has been proven in studies, which we can get to you, to cut the smoking rate and ultimately the cancer rate in counties that uh, adopt it. We actually have figures on that. Uh, and again, it doesn't cost the taxpayers a single penny to adopt that ordinance. And you will actually do something to affect the smoking and cancer rates in your county. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chandler, the last time that uh, this was brought before the court in discussion and it was looked into, I think Mr. Bullock brought us a ordinance and it had it said that you could be punishable 25 feet from the front door of, a, of an independent business. And now uh, you are saying now that it can be at the front door with it, the type. You can write your ordinance uh, really however you want to write yeah. is the truth of it. Now we would we would prefer to have a little space, yeah. certainly, but uh, but you don't have to to have that. And I think you can customize yeah. it the way you want to in that regard. What we're mainly interested in are indoor spaces. I know we all know the pitfalls of smoking, and we and we'd like to see everybody quit. And I don't think there's an individual up here on the court that does smoke. Uh, but having said that, it's uh, it's uh, the the government telling an individual if he owns a service station and he sets down to have him a sandwich for dinner and he wants to bring him out a cigar and smoke it and I have a real problem with government telling him that in his own business that he pays taxes on he makes a living for his family that he can't sit back and enjoy a cigar you know what I mean so uh, but we all like I say we all understand the pitfalls of smoking that smoking is no good for us that uh, so much health cost is associated with smoking. Um, I think what government needs to do, and this is my personal opinion, they look at they need to look at ways for an individual. Have you ever smoked, Mr. Chandler? Yes. Look for ways that can alter a, man, a person's mind or whatever. But I, I used to smoke, and it's the most addictive thing that I ever put in my mouth. Tremendously so. And. Uh, but it's it's so difficult to quit and I went and picked up a uh, had a friend of mine had an accident out here by the uh, tow road about two weeks ago and he's homebound he wanted me to go get him some cigarettes and I did and I bought three packs of cigarettes and there's twenty two dollars you know that would be a, that's almost enough reason for me to quit to start with but but the, the I guess the the point I'm trying to make is how do we go about as government to be able to help people to quit smoking. Well, we're trying to do that. Uh, the health departments around the state, yeah. uh, they sponsor smoking cessation efforts. Yeah. One of the difficulties that we've had, and I think this should be a concern of everybody, tobacco companies have actually infused extra nicotine oh, I'd say that's into true. their products for the sole purpose 
of addicting people. Yeah. If you now, remember, I've got a problem with that. Yeah. And not when you don't even know that something's being put in a product, yeah. and they're doing it for the sole purpose of addicting you to that product. That's a big problem. Yeah. If you remember, that that eats into my independence. Yeah. If you can. If you can remember, it may have been 10, 12, 15 years ago, I can't recall the exact date, where they had uh, five CEOs of, uh, of the tobacco companies and they were in front of a congressional hearing and they were asking them about nicotine being addictive and every one of them uh, said no. If you recall, and seen it on television, I where it recall. said, no, nicotine is not addictive. And I said, my gosh. How can they sit up there and say that anybody that's ever smoked in this audience or whatever knows the uh, addiction that nicotine is to them? So. Yeah. Um, well, you're exactly right. And what we would try, what we would like to do is have a full program to try to encourage people to quit the habit because it's very expensive. Every household, now this gets into the whole idea of telling people what to do. Uh, Everybody, including the people who don't smoke, have to pay about $1,200 a year to pay so other people can. Yeah. That's how much your health uh, insurance is jacked up for everybody on average. <coughs> so we've got to pay. You think it's not affecting the rest of us. Well, it is. It's affecting our freedom. So I agree with you about the freedom, saying somebody ought to have freedoms, <coughs> reasonable freedoms, but I only agree to that up to a point where it affects my freedom. And that's, you know, that's I'm what we've always wrestled with in this society is, is your freedoms extend to the end of my nose. Yes. And, and that's, uh, and I'm all for that. But in this particular case, there are a couple of things. Number one, you've got uh, this problem that we're paying for these people to smoke. Uh, despite the fact that we'd rather hold on to that money, probably. And then the other thing is the secondhand smoke issue. If you say, okay, you've got the freedom to smoke in a public building, a building where pub the public is allowed, what about the person who goes in and doesn't want to breathe the smoke? I would just soon not breathe it. It's not good for me. And, and I think there are a lot of people who feel that way. Another point that I, that I want to make, I think it's important to make, we have been polling this issue just to kind of get a handle on what the public thinks of it generally, and it's really been interesting. Uh, our latest statewide poll showed that 71% of the people in Kentucky are in favor of these smoke-free laws, which I don't know about you, but it's hard to get 71% of the folks to agree on anything. And, uh, and the other interesting thing about it is it cuts across party lines. Independent, Republican, Democrat, they're all right around 70%. So it's really, if there ever was a nonpartisan <coughs> issue, this is it. Yeah. Doesn't matter what party you belong to, you generally got the same attitude on this issue. Our poll showed about that, right? And the one we done a few years ago, it was about 70 uh, so we had so it's thing here. consistent, I think, all over the whole state how people feel about it. It's actually a popular thing to do. Uh, but I would also just submit to you that uh, you're protecting a whole lot of people in your community. You're also, and that's on one side of the ledger, you're protecting people in the community. You're uh, helping your community in terms of attracting jobs terms of the economy you're saving a whole lot of people money and then on the other side of the scale you've got somebody wanting to smoke where they want to you're not telling them they don't they can't smoke just you know go a few feet away and sit outdoors yeah <laughs> well <laughs> you're, you're yes. right you're right sand when you infringe upon others uh, this is what you were saying earlier so right. but down the strip here and I know even up in our little town uh, I don't know of a place that allows you to smoke in any any restaurant or no. or anything on all all the strip down two thirty one. And, and, so. and, and I think that probably is the case. Not a restaurant in Ohio County. And I don't know if they I don't know if it's actually they say smoke free, but people have been pretty respectful on that, I believe. But the only thing I've got a question for you is if this ordinance was passed, the people who run a business out of their home. The way I understand it, if they're a smoker, then they'll be fined 
because they run the business out of their home. Now, I don't, I, I, I think that that can be dealt with. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it, I don't, it, I don't, it depends on your particular ordinance. But I, but I think, you know, if the general public is allowed as a general matter into the business and business hours or if you have employees yeah. who might be uh, subject to that smoke then i think you'd probably be under it uh, on the other hand if it's just you if you have an internet business or something like that in your home and it's just you running it i, yeah. I doubt that it would fall under the you run, you know surveying business out of your home or something like that you're not subjected to a great big deal of clientele but you know you're going to have people come to your business so well if people are I would assume that if people were welcome to come to your business as customers or employees you would fall under the ordinance yeah okay. which is a little bit different than a real home I mean it is a a real business then with, with customers yeah and so well you know if you at it. I know what uh, my uh, lady friend had a, she has a smoke shop and but she has no smoking in it because she has other things and she don't want the, uh, any smell of smoke or whatever to land on the things other things she's going to sell but that gets back to the to my point that it's it's her choice not government's choice well I, I understand that uh, and again I would I would submit to you and I, I really do understand that point of view but we make choices all the time uh, we've got stoplights for instance and that that's the government telling people they can go or not go well you know, we've got stop signs we've got a, a huge variety of things we've got safety inspections of people's business telling them how they can handle their equipment within yeah. their own business let me say this it's a, it's the facts statistical facts that proves that uh, number one cause of diabetes in this country is cokes beverages and things of that nature but do we as government do we as they did in new york limit the size or whatever i mean i think you have to change people's habits and i, I don't mm -hmm. know how you do that you'd be more to know what i do but you have to change people's habits yeah. habits from drinking too many yeah. cokes or cigarettes yeah. or whatever gay i think you can do anything within the legal legal law as long as you do it in moderation yeah. well i agree with that but, yeah. uh, on on this particular yeah. subject we're fighting folks though who are addicting us yeah. and That's i'm not a little bit different yeah. me drinking a coke's not going to hurt me if i smoke a cigarette it, smoke cigarette, it will hurt her well that's right it, it is a different thing yeah but it'll, regard, it'll run my insurance cost up because she's got diabetes i mean if well, you want to put well, it that way uh, well and you and know, I'm not sitting here, don't get me wrong, Mr. Chandler, I'm not sitting here defending tobacco in any way. It's not that. It's all about just well, the oh, choice and free. Okay. I understand, and, and that's, you know, there are a lot of people who feel that way, but uh, I, I would just submit to you that we make decisions like that as a community. What you all are is you're the representatives of your community. That's what a government is, the representatives of that community. And we're making decisions all the time, having served in government myself. Yes, you have. We make decisions that we believe are in the best interests of the people who live in our community. And hopefully we have the support of our community to do that. And typically we make decisions on behalf of the majority of the people and we don't let one or two or however many people keep us from making decisions that are good for everybody now we don't want to make a bad decision you know we don't want to make a decision that isn't good for our community but it, it's always been my view that if there is something that is demonstrably good for the community we ought to consider seriously consider doing it on behalf of the people who live in that community yes yeah i just i don't see in the uh issue when i go into all the businesses in ohio county smoking problem it's not well and, and I of think course there's a few that i know that you know maybe has it but uh, uh i don't go there which ought to make it easy for you all to do this <laughs> you know, yeah. there ought not be too much political yeah. pushback well, the only thing i have is the issue about the uh, running a business out of your home could possibly small could. business and then you're yeah. Are cutting into their rights. Possibly could so look at that. There are five counties that have passed this. There are ordinances that they have passed. How far do they go with it? 
<coughs> well, the main question, what I'm getting at is, I'm walking down the street. I do actually smoke some. You know, that happens. Uh, I, I dip tobacco all the time. You know, I ain't scared to tell you that. I mean, I'm not proud well, of that. I mean, it's just fact. But if I want to walk up and down the street and light up a cigarette, how far does this order? How far do you want to push that order? Well, that's up to you. You all have to decide where you want the ordinance to go. But the health department here uh, has model ordinances available for you all to look at. Uh, I don't have one in front of me right now. But I, I was just wondering, Jim Rock, if the other five that have, how far did they take it? We actually have an, an ordinance. That's the thing I've got on my laptop. I can get it for you. And we looked at the other ones, and they were similar to about what we said 25 about 25 foot from the front door of a, of a business. I'm Jason Block. I was actually one of the ones for smoke free, still am. I do wish the state would man up and do their part. And, and well, we do on. too. We but, do I too. I mean, you know, it fall back. And I, I will say, I appreciate Ohio County Smoke Free because when they did start this, we had several restaurants that, 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 that were smoked, and now we're, we're down to nothing. So, you know, they, they have worked hard and uh, appreciate their hard work. But. Yes. I do think sometimes when you, I know you don't want to take rights away, but when you open up to a public, you start being a family business, you do lose some rights a little bit because when you open up to the public, laws say, for health reasons, here's why you have to do what you have to and do. You're exactly right. You already, there are a number of regulations that you have to follow if you open your business up to the public. Yeah. Quite a number. Uh, what I'm going to offer here, I'd like to, we, we do have a smoke freak uh, committee in place uh, it's not met for a while uh, I would like to charge that committee with meeting and looking at the ordinance and bring it back here on the September 11th and at that time we would have a one hour public uh, discussion on it prior to it and then we'd present the ordinance well, that's the charges I'm leaving with the committee let's um, while, while we're here so that would be August the September the 11th is when we're going. No, to I'm saying to have a meeting. <coughs> so here, August the 14th at four o'clock here. Before the, do I? I'll, I'll get the list, but I know the several. I know here Becky's here. on it. She's here. Yeah. We haven't met Ann's in a long time, I actually, since yeah, this court probably, but to, uh, I will get it, but we'll do it at 4 o'clock on the 14th of August. We won't have a meeting the 14th. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be in conference in Louisville that week. So when do we know when we'll reschedule on the... For the 21st. 21st. Okay. 21st? You could still meet on the 14th. I think you're just going to miss a couple members. And not only in, in, nobody in here is on that. Let's just do the 21st. <coughs> okay. 21st at 4 o'clock before the court meeting. Okay. When it is and, the w -W and you get, yeah. You get with uh, with Jay, Jason, get a list of the committee and send it out to notice to them. You. <coughs> okay. So 21st at 4 o'clock, and uh, uh, we'll find a list of the members of Miranda and send out notice to them. Okay. And you guys are welcome to attend. And we'll run it up the flagpole here on September the 11th. Well, Judge, thank you very much for that. And, and one of the reasons why we think it's important to, for, for the fiscal courts to make a public yeah, we're having a special decision on, on it 17. is because it's a we, signal we, that you send to the young one folks. In and that's, the, that's really the population that we are want to target. We want to make we're sure that young one. people don't start in the first place. And if we can do that, we can solve a lot of this problem as we move forward. <coughs> Yeah, now, and that's the to move it up so that, that we can have the uh, we've gone that bills that is, paid on time. Talk about the, the twenty eight children too late to work. Or in a house, they don't have they don't have right of choice. And that develops over years of being a. You know, so now, I don't know how you protect them. With this. Well, you don't with this, but what you hopefully do is you lower your smoking you rate, smoke so there are few people, fewer people who expose their children to that. And that's what you hope you do. You can't do it all. I mean, we've learned from prohibition in the 1920s that you can't outlaw something like this. It just won't work. So you have to look for other ways to try to to change the the.
community standards. I guess that's what you're talking about. How does the community feel about yeah. these things? And if the community looks on it as something that people ought not do, over time, fewer people will do it. Yeah, well, and that's, that's not true. Way an individual yeah. right, somebody. Yeah. That's their individual right. But when you when you open up the public, you know, you're taking away other people's rights. Well, that's exactly right. And by the way, it would be very fitting for Ohio County to do this because your namesake, the entire state of Ohio, has done this. <laughs> so. Thank there you. you are. Do you know how much money, my last question would be, do you know how much money is being put into research uh, to something to combat the addiction of nicotine? I, I don't know. I know that if you start there, if you could finally come up with something and start there, then that would eliminate anything beyond. Well, I, but I, I, that's the reason I, I just wondered, even on the federal level, state level, how much money is being put into research to, to somehow well, I can assure you not Help the addiction. And, and one of the things that you run into is that the tobacco companies make a concerted effort so. to prevent that. And particularly at the state level, they spent twice as much in this last session on lobbying as anybody else, any other interest in Frankfurt. The tobacco companies spent double what anybody else did. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that money is spent to try to prevent some of this information some of the research, money money spent on research, and so forth. So, you know, it, it's uh, not easy. It's not easy for those of us on this side of it yeah. to tackle the problem because, quite frankly, the tobacco companies have a whole lot more money than the advocates of, of smoke-free or, or people who are trying to get people to quit have. Uh, so it's an uphill battle. Have any other counties added anything to their ordinances, uh, like broadening them as far as like um, smoking with minors in the vehicle or anything like that, to broaden the location, not just restaurants? And I, I think actually foreign got some foreign governments have done that. I'm not sure whether uh, ours, didn't touch, ours didn't, the one we had didn't touch that. No. It was more yeah. public business. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, the biggest uh, thing that we had that we had the most complaints about was the buffer zone outside the door. Yeah. If we can look at maybe narrowing that down a little bit from 25 to 10 or 15, that might make it more palatable. Uh, before, uh, Mr. Chandler, we did have a public hearing here, had a, a, nearly a full building, and uh, we allowed an hour's worth of speaking, and we'd get one pro and one con and let them speak for, for that whole hour. So we did put a lot of time into this, into into this issue, and in the bottom of it, is, it we, I wish now we would have went ahead and moved on it, but we didn't. Uh, but we did a, just a polling of our court, and uh, uh, Mr. Bullock and myself were the only two that were actually wanted to pass it in the form it was at that time. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping now that maybe we can get to where it would be more palatable to others. And that was the last word. Uh, I think that would be wonderful if we could. And if there's anything that we can do to help in that process to make it more palatable, we'd certainly like to do it. And I know Becky and your coalition here uh, would very much like to do that. Uh, we just think it, it would uh, be quite good for the county. And, and as I said, I think it would also provide you a little boost in economic development. Because there are not very many other counties that have done it. And particularly in a county where you really don't have much in the way of businesses that allow it, uh, it really shouldn't be too terribly difficult for you all politically. In those areas, in um, Woodford, Lexington, and all this county, kind of, do they have a designated area at factories or something the like that? The city of Owensboro does. Do you know most of those? Davis County, the city of Owensboro. Owensboro Davis County Hospital, you don't smoke on the ground. I think that they can have a designated area if it's outdoors, and I yeah. think some of them may have that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know there's only six counties, but there's several <laughs> cities that have adopted this. Right. Their own. Quite a number of cities have. Paducah and Murray, uh, just this year, both of Paducah's made, made theirs comprehensive. They strengthened it. They had some exceptions and then they strengthened it. And Murray just flat out adopted a, a comprehensive smoke free ordinance. So it can be done and it's being done around the state. Uh, we just haven't had 
very many counties do it, and it's preferable for a county to do it because then it covers all the cities. Yeah. Uh, so we, we we would really like that if we could get it. But we're we would love to work with you and help in any way we can. Uh, it, it would be wonderful, and I think it'd be a great thing if Ohio County could do it. Yeah. I guess my point is that we can do these things, and which would be helpful. There's no question. Uh, but the addiction is so bad that, and the irony of it is, like in doctors, nurses, that I've seen that smoke, and they deal with the operations that they have lung cancer, whatever the case may do, they do that on a daily basis, yet they go outside and they smoke. And it, I just probably want to make the point that how addictive it is. Well, it, it, you're exactly right. It's but that's where I think research needs to be made, and I'd like to see this court. Well, you know, they're, uh, put, they're putting nicotine in the e-cigarettes. Yeah. They're putting oh, yeah, it in the vapor. Yeah. yeah. So it, it is tremendously addictive. There's no question about that. And the General Assembly actually passed a law that required uh, insurance plans to pay for cessation programs mm -hmm. to help people quit. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing that's been done. But I would also say, while it is addictive, all we're really doing with this ordinance is telling people we're just making it a little less convenient. We're not telling them they can't continue with their addiction. We're just telling them they need to go outdoors, which is really not, I don't think, that much to ask. Or protecting other people's rights. That's it. We're but, protecting other people's rights by making it just a little more inconvenient. Yeah. But I'd like to see, on my side of the, the argument is that Something needs to be done, research or whatever, a letter from this court to encourage our legislature to uh, put monies into research yes. to help the person that's addicted to nicotine. Yes. Well, I'm all for well, that. that. I, I think everybody's for that. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful thing if we could get that done. We Historically, we have had a terrible time getting the legislature to put any money into co tobacco control efforts. Yeah. And I understand lobbying. We all know that. We see how much money's put into <laughs> well, that's, it. That's a big efforts have been made to get more money uh, to put, be put in that direction. And uh, I mean, the health uh, advocate folks here can tell you that the tobacco settlement from uh, money, for instance, uh, there was an effort to get a, a, a decent chunk of that and it failed. Uh, almost a whole half of it goes to the farmers, which is not bad. I have to tell you, I think that's actually a good thing to diversify agriculture. But with the other half, you ought to be able to slice a little bit off. I would agree. To do this. Anyway, thank you all. Thank, thank really you. Appreciate thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and you listening to me. Uh, uh, very grateful for your consideration of this. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank grateful you. for the work that everybody's done. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You.